Welcome to the Saturday Slam and Jam. I'm your host, Andrew Schlecht. Go to theathletic.com slash NBA show and get the athletic for a discounted rate. I am literally at the airport in New York City after the <laughs> NBA draft. I have not slept at all. And I that hit up look of despair on your <laughs> face right when you paused there was the most beautiful thing I think I've seen because uh, I feel the same. <laughs> it's raw. It's real raw. Um, I was at the draft. It was a great experience. We're going to have a lot of really fun videos for you guys from the draft with fans and with the prospects that will go up on the Athletic NBA Show's YouTube page. So please go check those out. Uh, but today I've got Sam Vecini on here to talk about the draft and to hand out draft awards. This is our third annual NBA draft awards on Slam and Jam. So the first award, Sam, is first round fit award. This award goes to any player in the first round that you think fits best with the team that selected them. I mean, am I just allowed to say, is there is there a category that Victor Wembanyama fits better in than this one? I just have a guy shouting out, wanting me to shout out the, the Brooklyn Diner on the podcast. Shout out the Brooklyn did, Diner. Let's go. To the Brooklyn Diner. He's actually going to bring me some coffee, which is just, this is a godsend. Okay. No, you can choose whoever you want, Sam, whoever you want. So look, let's start with Victor Wembanyama because I think that is yeah. the most important place to start, right? Victor Agreed. Wembanyama is going to the San Antonio Spurs, a perfect organization for him to start his career in a perfect situation for him to start his career. They have a relatively open roster in terms of versatility long-term, but also a relatively open roster because of some of the players that they have that will allow them to get creative with some of the guys that they're able to acquire, right? You have a three and D wing in Devin Vassell. You have a wrecking ball in Keldon Johnson who can get to the basket and can drive and be that kind of creative force with a floor spacing four man or five man eventually in Victor Wembanyama. You have the Jeremy Sohan of it all. And you and I obviously love Jeremy Sohan. Love One him. Of, he had pur purple hair at the draft, by the way. He looked great. Just a king. Uh, one of the most versatile, I think, chess pieces uh, in the league uh, among younger players because of his ability to defend multiple positions on the ball and play on the ball or off of the ball uh, as soon as the shooting comes around. Finally, the guy that I think is actually really interesting here is Zach Collins. Uh, he really came on late in the year, yeah. last mm -hmm. year for San Antonio, as that floor spacing but physical five man that I think is like a perfect complement early in Victor Wembanyama's career in order for him to not get beaten up early. And if there's one thing Zach Collins will do, we know that dude will be an enforcer and he will get yeah. in dudes' faces if someone comes and tries to rough up Victor Wambanyama. I love the fit. They have a ton of cap space. I don't know that I would like go nuts using their cap space right now necessarily. Although if someone like an Austin Reeves came up and they were able to get him from the Lakers, yeah, he's a younger player that fits their age timeline. Something like that would make sense to me, but it has to be Vic because this is the Victor Wembanyama draft, despite the fact that it felt like a lot of what happened last night did not involve Victor Wembanyama, uh, just because the drama was out of that situation from the time the lottery ended. Yeah, the drama wasn't there, but I'll tell you, in person, it was all about Victor Wembanyama. That was the entire was event felt like it was made for him specifically because even when it got to the second pick in the draft, the amount of people that just left was astounding. I was sitting next to somebody in the in media row and he sat there, he took a video of Victor getting selected and he, boom, out, gone. And that was probably a third of the media that was there. We're just done after they saw Vic get chosen and some of the crowd too, like this, this event just felt like it was for Vic, the way that they handled him on the red carpet, the way that he was handled in every single situation. And he handled it beautifully, by the way, which yeah. is probably no surprise to you is that this dude is such a pro, but the draft was all about him. And it felt like yeah. everybody else, at least at the event was just a complete afterthought. That it was just yeah. this this event was put on for Victor Wimbanyama. Yeah, I mean, all, everything that you say there is right in terms of the professionalism at the very least. He is a guy that has been very, very well known throughout the course of his career at this stage 
for his professionalism and for the fact that he is, you know, since the time he's been 15, 16 years old, just like a pro already. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, my fit is going to be a little bit more of a deep cut. I just love that Jaime Jaquez wound up on the heat. I just think that dude is going to play for them and he's going to be awesome and he's going to show yeah. toughness and he's going to look like a veteran from day one. Uh, we got to talk to him a little bit today too. And he was just an absolute joy. Just yeah. so excited to be there. Um, and I think he's going to make an immediate impact for the Miami heat and Spolster is going to know how to use him just like that. And it's going to be amazing. I, I really, when I saw that, I said, okay, I like that. I know how that's going to work. Yeah. No, I, I mean, Hawkes is one of my favorites in this class. I ended up with him at 23. I think that's the highest anyone had him on their public facing board. I wish I would have ranked him at like 16. Honestly, yeah. like I, yeah. I, I genuinely, if I could go back, I would have him at like 16 or 17. I, I adore yeah. him. I, I think he is one of the dudes that I just completely believe in. And somebody asked him uh, in one of those like little pre-draft social videos, who is your favorite player uh, on the court? And he said, Jimmy Butler. And then they asked off the court and he said, Jimmy Butler, Jimmy Butler, which <laughs> I love. I yeah, love. that's amazing. Okay. Our second award is the second round steal award. Who went in the second round? There's like, oh my gosh, how did they slip this far in the draft? Who is that for you, Sam Vecini? Yeah, so easy one for me because I had this guy as a lottery grade. It's Leonard Miller. And the reason Leonard slipped is a little bit complex and I don't, know that I feel totally comfortable talking about it on mic. Just if only to say that uh, uh, he got, he got injured, I believe in a workout uh, Mm. like in the middle of the draft process and ended up having to sit out a few workouts that were kind of scheduled and it resulted in, you know, I think some chaos later in the process for him maybe Mm. is the fairest way to put it. Uh, Mm -hmm. but Leonard Miller is going to be a star, uh, maybe not a star, but like, he's going to be a dude that is able to get points. He's going to be a high upside swing for the Minnesota Timberwolves. I thought this was an absolutely outstanding selection, uh, for Minnesota to move up and go get him. I thought it was super smart. It's a potential long-term, you know, replacement for Naz Reed. If Naz Reed decides to depart in free agency and, Mm -hmm. It's a perfect fit next to Carl Anthony Towns, I think, particularly if they decide to continue to build around Towns, although we'll see if that ends up being the case. So, you know, Leonard Miller, they've had really good success with these multi-positional kind of guys on the wing and in the front court. And I think that it's a really, really good opportunity for him to likely play in the G League next year. And then, you know, hopefully by year two, he'll be able to contribute. Yeah, I like that, too. I think he slid way too far. Another guy I think slid a little too far was C.D. Sissoko, who was mocked in the second round for a lot of people, but I think he landed in a really good situation in San Antonio where they're going to know how to use him. He's super physical on both ends and a pretty good passer, and I just think that he's going to fit in with what San Antonio does, and they're going to figure out a way to use this guy. Uh, so I really I really liked that fit in particular with a, with a young team that's going to – not force him to contribute right now to winning, but like, let's see what he's got. And I think it's yeah. a perfect situation for him to go to. Yeah. And the other thing is there that they have a very good G league program. He's another guy that will spend a lot of time in the G league early on in his career. And yep. that's the kind of program that I think he needed to land in, in order to have the most success long-term in terms of his own development. Mm-hmm. Okay, our next award is the League Pass Jump Award. Which team is going to make the biggest jump in League Pass rankings just from this draft? Let's let's go non-Victor Wimbanyama because obviously San Antonio yeah. was not fun to watch. And and clearly, they're probably, I mean, they're going to get national televised games. They're going to have a ton going on just because of him. But is there somebody else that you think, okay, that player is going to help, you know, boost just like their recognition on Twitter, if anything else? Is this where we want to have the Houston Rockets conversation? Maybe. Uh, yeah, they go out sure. and they get Amen Thompson, who is one of the most fun players to watch, genuinely. Yeah. I think whatever you want about Amen as a long term prospect, just because sure. of his shooting concerns. But undeniably, the fun factor just went through the roof 
with the Houston yeah. Rockets by acquiring Amen Thompson. His creativity as a passer, his ability to create all sorts of angles for passing reads by uh, forcing the issue in transition by uh, any number of factors that he is able to bring to his team in terms of first step, in terms of his jump stops that cover like eight feet, it seems like. Uh, he is a really, really unique player. And then on top of it, they go and get the guy that I had at number three in a vacuum, you know, on my board in Cam Whitmore, who yeah. is another guy that will enter the NBA as a top 15 athlete in the league. Uh, I just tweeted this, but like that Houston Rockets team is now going to be able to trot out a lineup. Maybe it's not this year, but at some point that is Amon Thompson, Jalen Green, Cam Whitmore, Jabari Smith, Alper and Shangun. Yeah. You can run all sorts of creative stuff at the top with Shangun, where you have like Amon cutting off of Shangun's passes. You can run all sorts of really fun stuff with uh, Amon Shangun two man game stuff with their passing ability. You can use Whitmore as a cutter. You have three really good shooters out there. And the idea is essentially you have two elite passers for their position and Amen Thompson and Shangun. You have yep. three guys around them that I think project as shooters long term. And then you have three guys in Thompson, Whitmore, and Green that are legitimately, I think, top 15 athletes in the NBA from day one. Mm, yeah. And that sounds incredibly fun. They're going to have to figure out like how to play together and how to move the ball so it doesn't get stagnant. They got a but, new coach. Yeah. Undeniably, that's an incredibly fun situation, I think. Yeah, I agree. And my hope for the Houston Rockets is that them getting two really good prospects in this draft will make them pump the brakes a little bit on this. We're going to be good next year thing <laughs> because now they have, I mean, just stacking up talent that they have yeah. for young guys. You could, I mean, you could make the argument that it's unparalleled. Like there's not any other team that has guys that are that young, that are that good. You could say like them and the thunder are probably neck and neck with what they have, but they're obviously so different in what they're trying Here, to do. Here's, here's the problem, Andrew. I love all of those guys on Houston. I like absolutely love them. Yeah. I don't know if I would trade all of them for Victor Wembanyama. <laughs> like if I was San Antonio <laughs> and yeah. Houston offered me all five of them, I don't know that That's I would probably... take that. For so talent for talent. It's just yeah. Vic in a class of his own. And that, I mean. And I, for what it's worth, like I would still take Oklahoma City too. For yeah. like I, I would because they have Shea mm -hmm. and I think Chad is unbelievable. I had him at number one on my board last year. And sure. Like. Jalen Green and Josh Giddy and you know, all of those guys are going to be max level guys. And I think they did yeah. well tonight. So, yeah, I guess my, my just my just my point hard. is just like, don't don't feel the need to fill this team with veterans that are going to be overpaid, that are going to take minutes away from those guys. Like if you sign if they sign Dylan Brooks, that's just telling Cam Whitmore like, hey, Cam Whitmore, sit <laughs> down, like go play for yeah. the Vipers, you know. I don't want that for him. Like, I think he, I think he can come in and play if you just let him like, just give him the time yeah. to spread his wings a little bit and to play and to figure it out and not hamper these guys with veterans that are going to soak up too many minutes just because your owner like feels the pressure to win. Because I, I'm not even convinced yeah. that if you added like a couple of vets that, it, that they would even win. So like, so I think yeah. you might get to the end of the season, have the exact same result, and think, man, we just wasted developmental minutes of a ton of these guys. So I just, I just think that maybe, maybe this is a huge blessing to the Rockets and that they can actually develop the guys that they have instead of trying to hit the fast forward button, which I think would be a massive mistake for them. I just don't think it's, I just don't think it would actually help them. Yeah, no, I, I agree with you. I, I hope they do slow it down. Um, the, the thing that I think that I, you know, maybe quibble with a, a little bit is I do think they need defensive infrastructure pieces. Like sure. Dylan Brooks would bring that on some level. The decision making would be I was gonna say, but the but the shots, I mean he's like, he's gonna hop in there and think I can take 25 shots a game or whatever. 100%. And that's what you don't want. Yeah. Like the guy that Woj mentioned tonight on the broadcast, Brooke Lopez, like if they could get Brooke Lopez, like that's oh. awesome. Like yeah. fantastic. Do that. That's a home run for them. Yeah. 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 I think that, that makes a ton of sense. Today's show is brought to you by LinkedIn. 
Visit linkedin.com slash NBA show 23 for more information. Are you struggling to close deals? You know, cold outreach is wasting the time of both the buyer and the seller at every stage, especially when the sellers are using shallow and outdated data. Your organization can overcome these challenges with technology that translates comprehensive, high-quality buyer data into real-time insights. These deeper insights empower sales reps and teams to adopt the habits of top performers, which leads to better outcomes, like more pipeline, higher win rates, and larger deals. We call this Deep Sales, and we've built the first Deep Sales platform with the next generation of LinkedIn Sales Navigator. Right now, you can try LinkedIn Sales Navigator and get a 60-day free trial at linkedin.com slash NBA show 23. That is linkedin.com slash NBA show 23 for a 60 day free trial. Let LinkedIn sales navigator help you sell like a superstar today. Just go to linkedin.com slash NBA show 23 and get started. Uh, is, is there anybody else? I, I like Brandon Miller with LaMelo. I think they could be fun. I like Colby Jones with them too. If, if he can get into the rotation early on, I'm not sure that it well, Col- necessarily Col- helps. Colby Jones is going to uh, Sacramento, I think, for what it's worth. Oh, he is. Okay. So you haven't caught up on all the trades yeah. here. Um, but I, I like Brandon Miller with, you know, with that Hornets team. I think that he's going to bring quite a bit. And I think that he gets maybe under discussed a little bit because it's like it's all Vic. It's all Scoot. <laughs> and like, I don't feel like people break down Brandon Miller's game a whole lot. Yeah. Uh, can, yeah. You, can you talk about maybe how he'd fit with LaMelo a little bit? Yeah, no, I agree with you. People don't talk about his game enough, maybe is a fair way to put it. I think people talk about him in the situation that the Hornets found themselves in yeah. with him against Scoot at number one or number two, yep. I'm sorry. And that just seems like a fascinating situation that unfolded for a number of yep. reasons. Yes. Uh, but in terms of his Well, and game, I will tell you this about Brandon Miller real quick. He is He was probably the most beloved of all of his peers today that i saw uh-huh. like everybody yeah. loved him everybody absolutely loved that guy all of his peers kind of looked yeah. up to him and just you could just tell that he was like one of the guys in the room that everyone kind of looked to so just just for like what that's worth no like I, yeah nobody will say that he's like a bad look i mean he made seemingly a potentially not great decision depending on you know your perspective on his situation in alabama I, I would argue he probably did not make a great decision. Yeah. But, you know, regardless of legalities or anything, you know, probably did not make a great decision being involved in that situation mm-hmm. at all. And beyond that, though, like people like Brandon Miller, like he's a nice kid. Yep. <laughs> I mean, it's yep. the reality of the situation. Mm-hmm. Uh, in terms of his game, like he's a real gunner from the three point line. The thing that he didn't get to show a ton of this year at Alabama is the mid-range game, which is actually what he was known for in high school. And I think that if anything, like that's kind of the argument for taking Brandon Miller, if you're a Hornets, you know, front office executive, is the fact that, you know, we went back, we watched all this tape, how much Mitch Kupchak actually did this, I don't know. Uh, Other front offices, I would feel confident that they would, the Hornets, who knows. But like, (laughs) I think that, in general, the argument is that this guy he has this great mid-range game. You know, he just didn't get to show it this year. He has the low release point from three, but he actually knows how to raise the release point in the mid post to be able to get up shots against, you know, tougher, longer opposition. He's six foot nine. He's big. He's a wing. He can shoot. He is not a bad defender. He's, you know, a solid defender. He's not going to, you know, be an all defense guy or anything, but he's okay. The issue is just that like, I don't think he's an awesome athlete, like just point blank. I don't think he has Mm. a ton of lift. I don't think he has Mm -hmm. a great first step. And I don't think he's like wildly strong. You can get Mm -hmm. away with that. Like I would say all of those qualities track with Chris Middleton and Chris Middleton, you know, at his peak was the top 15 player in the league and, you know, was the second best player on a title team with all due respect to Drew Holiday. So I, I do genuinely think that you can find routes for Brandon Miller to be successful. And I think that Brandon Miller profiles exceedingly well as that number two option uh, because of that ability to knock down shots off the catch, play off of closeouts, string out like mismatches on second side actions, and hopefully improve his sequencing as a driver, getting to the basket in terms of his footwork. 
and, and I think that it, it he will be a really, really, really good player for New Orleans. Like I, I don't really have many uh, concerns about that. He, he will be a good basketball player. It's just, will he be a top 10 basketball player, which is what I think mm. Scoot Henderson's ceiling is. Yeah. Yeah. No, that makes sense. Okay. Our next award is they definitely have a type award. This goes to the team <laughs> that you're just like, this was very predictable that they would pick this kind of player. Uh, very predictable that they would pick this type of player. That is a great one. That I feel is like a the, truly... The, yeah, you I go like first. This, it, well, it's interesting because I feel like there's several in here that I was like, oh, wait, they, they actually don't quite fit what that team would normally do. Like Grady mm-hmm. Dick going to the Raptors, I thought was mm-hmm. one where I was like the opposite of this. Like, oh, well, that doesn't really seem like a Raptors-y guy. Um, and then let's see, who else was, I was just a little bit like, oh, huh. Uh, Jet Howard so, going 11 to the magic, whereas like, OK, like Jet Howard's tall and he can shoot, but he doesn't like possess <laughs> the the typical skills of like a magic forward, which is like, you know, defensive so, versatility and, and things like that. To bounce off of that, the guy is probably Anthony Black in terms of the type. Great yes. positional size. Yes. Great feel for the game. Great kid. Like those are the three things that the Orlando Magic like really like to tick in terms of boxes when evaluating players. Uh, Anthony Black is like a six foot six point guard. He's an unbelievable passer and playmaker who makes incredibly quick decisions. He's a good defender and a great kid, like great kid. But everybody that you talk to about Anthony Black, like loves Anthony Black as a kid. Uh, Quiet, but like really, really uh, awesome kid. So I think that that's probably it. Also Mm -hmm. doesn't shoot it. And the magic, I think, tend to believe that yep. they can improve shooting if you look back mm-hmm. through their draft history. Mm-hmm. I think, and I'm not sure that I saw this so clearly before the draft, but after kind of seeing it now, I think Case and Wallace going to the Thunder makes a lot of sense <laughs> because he's. Should, should we talk about this? Because this was a fun one, I think. Yes, we should. Uh, so they, the Thunder traded the 12th pick. For the 10th pick, and they took back Davis Bertans' $17 million contract for next year. And then it's partially guaranteed for $5 million the, the next year if yeah. he if he plays more than 75% of his games. So I can guarantee you that dude's not playing 75% of his happen. games next year. <laughs> <laughs> like that's number one. That's going to be a very valuable trade chip for not the gonna, Thunder. Not, not, uh, not, not going to work here anymore. <laughs> yeah. And you know, with the second apron stuff coming into play, that Bertans contract might be pretty interesting for some teams, if, especially if he only plays seventy four percent of his games next year. Um, so the Thunder basically, but the Thunder ownership basically paid seventeen million dollars so they could move up two spots. Is is what happened? Um, and they took Casey Wallace, who is a really interesting prospect. He can play both sides of the ball. Really physical defender. That's something that Sam Presti talked about a ton in his uh, postseason presser was just about how they needed to be more physical. And they needed to be more physical with the team that they had. And they needed to be more physical moving forward with who they selected. And he definitely fits that. But he can also pass and he can do a lot of things. He can probably play up a position just because of his aggressiveness on defense. Uh, The one thing that he doesn't, really possess his size for position because he's only six three six four but i think he makes up for that with physicality so i I thought that that when you kind of look at it through a different lens you can see like oh okay yeah this is definitely a thundery guy so hear me out as i go down this conspiracy theory rabbit hole that might be stupid oh oh i like this let's go so the, the Mavs obviously wanted to get off of the Bertans contract. Yes. That was, they, they want to clear the books for, you know, the next couple summers if they can yep. in some respect. Yep. Is there a chance that Sam Presti saw that contract given their current situation where they have a bunch of cap space Yep. as an asset moving forward for them long-term? 
because of thousand percent, thousand percent. Yes. That, you know, limited guarantee on that last year, next season. Yeah. I actually wonder, because look, I'll be honest. I did not hear much in terms of the Orlando magic, the team that they jumped to get into that number 10 overall spot Yeah, in regard to case and Wallace. Yeah. Uh, that's not to say they wouldn't have taken him, but right. I didn't hear the name much. Yeah. Um, at number 10, I heard Kaysen a little bit for Dallas, but I'd heard Lively way more. I felt like Lively was probably the more likely option. Yeah. I do think that really by moving up, what you were guarding against was probably another team moving up into 10 or 11 and stealing Kaysen Wallace from them, yeah, maybe. That, like yeah, you're safeguarding against that. Yeah, that seems most likely to me as well. But I actually wonder if, if Presti wanted that Berton's contract because if you look at who they drafted, they drafted Case and Wallace. Case and Wallace is a direct like for like replacement for Lou Dort. Yeah. Lou Dort and Davis Berton's next year combine for something like 32 and a half million dollars. Correct. That gives you very distinct trade flexibility to be able to go out on the market and potentially go and get another damn near max player. Yeah, true. Um, this is true. Look, maybe maybe we're giving Presti like a little bit too much respect. And as like <laughs> other general managers listen to this, I'm going to get like a text and just be like, you are a fucking idiot. <laughs> like <laughs> there is like a, a very real chance that that happens. But I don't know. I kind of am wondering if there is a little bit of that in terms of what they saw. I don't think that's impossible. I do think that it was always going to be more likely that they filled this cap space with a contract like that than with a free agent or anything that was more long-term. And yeah. so this is actually like a trade, not specifically for K to take Kaysen, but like the Bertans contract was always something that, you know, we talked about on down the dunk was like, Hey, like that makes a ton of sense. That would give Dallas the flexibility that they want. The Thunder could take him back. I don't know. Like maybe Bertans can play a little bit for Mark Degnault. Mark Degnault's really good at taking a player that has like a couple distinctive skills and like, just like meshing them into the team. Like they did with mm -hmm. Isaiah Joe this past year. Yep. And with, I mean, I don't know, a tall shooter mixed in with, Josh Giddy and Shea and Jalen Williams and now Case and Wallace. Like, I don't know. I think, I mean, I think that he might be able to do something. Not that he's going to be like a long term anything for the Thunder, but there might be a, a couple Bertons games this year for the Thunder. I think I would guess that he'll hang around just for the, for the reason that you said is just to keep opportunities available for you yeah. in case something yeah. comes up. And there's, there is going to be a team that's not as good as they, hope they would be that's going to be heading for the second apron and they're going to think we are so screwed unless we give up some kind of player that makes money that's probably valuable that another team could probably use and the thunder will just be like hey we got this guy that's making 17 next year that's only guaranteed for five like and they yeah. somebody's going to pounce on that or somebody might give an asset for that i mean back in the day you know teams would give up picks just so that they could get off money, like just and the, only, and, and that's a that's a deadline move more than anything. Yeah, uh, yeah. As opposed to like an after the season move, because at that point you actually have to guarantee some of the money next year. What yep. I think the Bertans contract does more than anything is it gives you more deadline flexibility if you're Oklahoma City. And now sure. we spent way too much time on Oklahoma City, probably, which <laughs> no, I'm sure you're too listening much listeners. about love Bertans. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. We did five minutes on. Davey B, we, we might oh. want to move on. It's time to move on. It's time to move on. Today's show is brought to you by our friends at Chime. Visit chime.com slash NBA show for more information. Good money habits start with your very first paycheck. And if you just scored your first job, you got an opportunity to jumpstart a healthy financial journey. When you sign up for Chime and link a qualifying direct deposit, you get access to benefits like getting paid up to two days early and fee-free overdraft up to $200. And with Chime, there are no monthly fees, no minimum balance, and no deposit required to become a member. 
So sign up for a Chime checking account today to link your paycheck. It only takes two minutes and doesn't affect your credit score. Get started at Chime.com slash MBA show. That's Chime.com slash MBA show. Chime is a financial technology company, not a bank. Banking services and debit card provided by the Bank Corp Bank NA or Stride Bank NA. Members FDIC. Early access to direct deposit funds depend on payer. Spot me eligibility requirements and overdraft limits apply. See Chime.com slash spot me. Okay, uh, next one is the Mixed Emotions Award. The pick that just left you with, uh, I just don't know about this one. Okay, let's let's talk about Brandon Pajemski, right? Because okay. throughout the yeah. process, I've been a bit lower on Brandon Pajemski than the general consensus is. Uh, yeah. Most people have him as like a first round pick, you know, somewhere in the 15 to 25 range. Most teams have him in that range as well. I have him like at 40 or so. I didn't really have a first round grade on him. I saw him as like a borderline guarantee guy. I love his fit with Golden State. Okay. I think it's like a perfect fit for him in terms yeah. of being able to, he's a smart passer. He's a smart mover without the basketball. He's a super high IQ guy. I think that like, if it's going to work for him somewhere, Man, is Golden State just like a perfect fit? Like if I was doing a Golden State specific board, I would have Pajemski as a first round pick. Like okay. great. Yeah. No questions asked. Yeah. But man, I just I just struggle to see how he's gonna defend. I, I really yeah. do. And that's ultimately why I couldn't get to a first round grade in general on him. But I think for that scheme, man, if it's if it's gonna work somewhere, it's gonna work there. I dr- I truly believe that. Hmm. Yeah, I I have a couple that I'm a little shaky on. One is the uh, the Wizards getting Bilal Kulabali and yeah. having to give up a couple assets in order to actually get him. And <laughs> it's it's maybe maybe it's not a reach at all, but he is definitely like one of like the swing like swing for the fences. And I get it. If you're the Wizards, the cupboard is bare. And they're going to have well, minutes for him. They're going to have. Yeah, go ahead. You had to see this coming. Like you this, come from Oklahoma City. I know. I know. This is like a Will Dawkins like swing. And I, I don't know, Will. I want to be is. clear about that. Like from yeah. everything I know about Will Dawkins, like he was heavily involved in their draft process over the course of the last at least six years. Yeah. And he and Sam Presti think quite similarly in terms of things. Yep. And everything I know is that this like completely ticks like all of their boxes. Yeah, yeah it does. And the play, the other players that would have in Anthony Black or Asar Thompson weren't there. And so yeah. maybe maybe it was the fact that both those guys were gone. It's like, okay, well, it's going to be Koulibaly. And then the Pacers <laughs> caught wind of that. And they're like, hey, no, it's not. Unless you give us two second round picks. <laughs> and then... Yeah. You know, well, I so given the way the board ran out, I think there was a chance that Utah could have moved up. I think that oh, to, okay. I think more than anything, by moving up, Washington was blocking a Utah trade up as opposed yeah. to like you know, blocking Indiana from taking him. Yeah, okay, yeah, that makes sense. Uh, my other one is a is a Sar Thompson to the Pistons just. For the fact that if he doesn't shoot it, it just makes Cade Cunningham's life just a little bit harder because they're playing with a traditional center. And Jay Nivey is not necessarily a guy that you're going to close out to either. And so who's spacing the floor for Cade Cunningham if he's the one handling the ball? I feel like it's just allowing you to cheat. And I know those guys can probably cut and move and you can find ways for it to work. But there is just an awful lot of iffy shooting on that Pistons roster. Uh, and that one, I need to see it. And obviously, it's gonna this one's going to take time, too, which it, it just kind of slows down the timeline a little bit more for the Pistons, who have been doing this for a long time. And maybe it pays off, and maybe Asar Thompson is one of the best players in this draft. But I just struggle a little bit with just the overall fit with, with those guys around Cade Cunningham. So uh, look, I'll at least say this, the, the Monty Williams Phoenix Suns, in general 
over the course of the four years that they went on this little run were all four years in the bottom half of the league in three-point attempt rate and in three of the four years in the bottom third of the league in three-point attempt rate. Yeah. So I do think that Monty can make it work in terms of that offensive structure, but it's going to be, you know, it's going to be a process, I think. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it is good. I think having Monty there, I think will help. Just having a different coach, some fresh eyes on this roster, I think will be good. Okay. The next award is the Miffed and Peeved Award, which pick just made you feel mad, just made you feel miffed and peeved for any reason whatsoever. <laughs> the Miffed and Peeved Award. We oh, Alex man. Alex and I had a teacher uh in high school that used whenever we would we'd have all kinds of hijinks in her class, and she would always tell us that she was getting miffed and peeved at us. And so we've just carried that phrase into our adulthood. I adore that. <laughs> Look, I, I don't really get mad at draft picks for the most part. I, I will give uh, I will give Memphis credit. They took a guy that I genuinely did not even remotely consider ranking. Like, <laughs> I can't imagine that Tariq uh, Biberovich would have been anywhere resembling in my top 175 players. Yeah. Uh, the only reason I had <laughs> okay. him on one of my spreadsheets was because he declared for the 2021 draft. And, you know, I just list all of the early entries uh, just to have them just, you know, is I have to knock it off the bucket. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out Zach Kleinman, man. <laughs> I respect the absolute hell out of Zach. That guy just, he goes for it. <laughs> Does not give a shit what anybody else's consensus is. And he is just going to go for it. And if yeah. he wants to draft Tariq Biberovich at 55 overall, because they have to use a stash pick and you're going to do that instead of Nadir Hefe or, uh Nikos uh Rogabakpolis, uh the guy that uh is awesome as a shooter that like I guess blew the doors off the place at a combine uh combine pro day earlier this year. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> sure. You, you may not sure. be peeved, but you do seem a little bit miffed about it. Um okay. I I I've I've been used, maybe is a better <laughs> word. <laughs> Uh, the one that I'm miffed and peeved about is Kobe Bufkin not going in the lottery. I think that's a he's, he's a lottery pick, and his his hair was spectacular last night. Uh, that that dude is a lottery pick. I just think he's really good. I think the Hawks got a really good player at 15. Uh, I was a little perplexed at some of the other players that went ahead of him. I was really surprised when his teammate Jet Howard went ahead of him. I don't know that a yeah, lot of people that's... had that. That kind of blew my mind a little bit. Um, in, so definitely miffed. Choice to me. Yeah. So I miffed and also peeved at that, that he shouldn't have gone uh, that low. I miffed and peeved for you that he's not going to be in Oklahoma City because yeah. I saw you ask him for a message for the Buffkin boys. I did. On the red I did. He gave a very serious answer, which was a little bit of a red flag, but he gave a very serious <laughs> answer about that. I uh, I asked um, or I texted that video to Penny. Uh, I don't think yeah. Matt will care, even though Matt, Matt is uh, in the private sector now. I texted yeah. that video to Penny, and Penny texted me back simply two words: "He's flawless," and <laughs> was not talking about Kobe Buffkin. In wow! That clip. <laughs> wow! That's hilarious! <laughs> what an incredible, uh, incredible video! Oh. Uh. I had no choice. I knew when I saw him walking down the red carpet, I was locked in. I was like, deliver Kobe Bufkin to me and let me talk to this man. Um, okay, last one, and then we're going to wrap up here at LaGuardia Airport, the first time that I've done Slam and Jam from the airport. Um, okay, the Slam and Jam Best Draft Award. This award goes to the team that you just think had the very best draft out of anybody last night. Who is it, Sam? Okay. So the answer is the Spurs because they got Victor Wembanyama. No question. That is the answer that needs to be given here. Yeah. 
Okay. The second answer is the Rockets. We've talked yeah. a lot about the Rockets here. I don't yeah. feel the need to like belabor the point on Houston either, because at the end of the day, we've talked a lot about Houston here. Yeah. I will give credit to Dallas here, I think. And I will give credit to Portland in this circumstance. Yeah. It's I was going to give, yeah, Portland points. is, yeah. Portland is a good one. I was going to, I was going to say Portland, but yeah, go ahead. So I'll, I'll let you talk about Portland. The reason I say Dallas is I think that they accomplished so many tasks tonight uh, that will help them into the future. They got off of the contract of Davis Bertans. They added the contract of Rashawn Holmes in a separate ancillary deal. But the big thing they wanted to do throughout this draft process was add depth and add uh, some sort of younger rookie scale players that were defensive minded, that would fit with Luka Doncic, that would fit with Kyrie Irving and would allow those guys to grow around uh, that significant two core player uh, duo. Mm-hmm. By getting Derek Lively, they got for my money, the best defensive center outside of Victor Wembanyama in this draft. He's awesome on defense. He is so, so, so good on defense. It's not going to be day one. It will probably be year two where he really steps up and becomes a starting center in the NBA. He is awesome. Like his defensive versatility, you can play him in different kinds of ball screen actions. You can have him protect the rim and drop. You can just do so many different things with them. It's an outstanding pick. They also go out and they get Omax Prosper. The guy that I compare Omax Prosper to all the time is Dorian Finney-Smith. They got a ready-made replacement for Dorian Finney-Smith as a guy that can really lock down opposing players on the perimeter and can really move around screens. He has great hip flexibility. He's a really smart kid, like really, really high-level thinker. Like just an awesome, awesome human being. I completely buy him there. Uh, And frankly, I think that if you're trying to rehabilitate and like rebuild asset value of one of these two guys that has two years left on their contract, Rashawn Holmes, in terms of his player profile, fits the bill better playing with Luka Doncic because these guys do tend to make centers look better. Like, yes. Yeah. Like there's a chance that Rashawn Holmes averages like 14 points a game next year. And like, we don't look at him as an underwater asset. Like he wasn't Sacramento anymore. And we get to see those, those beautiful short floaters again. Yeah, that's true. I love it. And they saved like $5 million on their cap sheet. uh, Cause I think Holmes is at like 14 or no, he's at like 12 or so, something like that. Don't, don't quote me on that number. They saved like a little bit of money on their cap sheet. Yeah. Yeah. I like Omax to them too. I think that's, that that's a home run. I really like that portion of what they did. And as far as like somebody coming in and helping. Today's show is brought to you by Front Door. Download the Front Door app and get a free video chat. We all have that long, incredibly nagging home to-do list that we keep putting off. It's full of annoying stuff that just needs to be fixed. A dripping dishwasher, hole in the drywall, or maybe your dryer is not actually drying your clothes. Well, wouldn't it feel great to get all that done? Well, now you can, and it's easier than ever. Introducing Front Door, the all-new one-stop home repair and maintenance app. Front Door lets you video chat with experts in real time so you can diagnose the problem faster. Sometimes you can fix it yourself on the video chat. Or Front Door will send you a list of vetted and trusted pros to come out and help solve the problem. With a Front Door membership, it's easy to cross things off your home to-do list and enjoy that feeling of done. Download the app now and get a free video chat with an expert to start solving your problems today uh scoot henderson good job blazers for not screwing this up this was not that hard (laughs) this was the easy decision sometimes the right decision is the easiest decision to make and that's just take a prospect that would be number one in almost any other draft take him and then figure out what you're going to do with dame because dame is i know that we praise him for being loyal, but he's also sends mixed messages through the media. And it's just, it gets, it's gotten a little bit weird. And so if I'm them, I'm bringing in Scoot Henderson and I am going to figure it out. Play him with Dame. See what it looks like. 
see how it works. It may not be the worst thing in the world. It may be better than having Pascal Siakam for the next you know, couple of years or re-signing Pascal to some giant contract. And then you watch him and Dame age together and not probably not win a title because it was there actually a move that would have gotten the Blazers to contender status. Probably not having a guy like Scoot Henderson for the next decade. That probably gives you more of a chance to reach contender status than trying to trade that pick and get somebody that's maybe closer to Dame's age and just watching them kind of age together and maybe go second round and out at best. So good job blazers for not making this more complicated than it needed to be. Completely agree. Uh, they, they nailed it. They, they absolutely nailed it. I think really, really smart by just taking scoot Chris Murray will help like, you know, taking him at 23. Yeah. Completely reasonable pick. Uh, yeah. Valuable player. Like we'll, we'll play in the NBA for quite a long time. Uh, just they've, they did really, really well tonight. Uh, and I think that you're hundred percent right. I, I don't blame Dame for sending mixed messages. I think it's completely reasonable for Damian Lillard to, sure. uh, you know, want to stay and be conflicted about it. Mm-hmm. You're never going to hear me like say that his feelings on the matter are not valid. I think they are. I think it's completely reasonable for him to share them in the public. I prefer that he shares them in the public. Like, I, I think it's great that, you know, he's willing to get on Instagram live and just be like, look, I don't want to play for a team that is in the middle of a youth rebuild. I'm going to be yeah. 33 years old. Uh, I'm mm-hmm. coming off of statistically the best season of my career. Like, I think that it's completely reasonable for me to want to go to a contender or to play for a contender. And yeah, I mean, look, if you're the Blazers, given that he's 33, you probably have a two year window, maybe three year window to build a title contender around him. And I don't think they are two years away from being able to build a title contender around them. I just don't. And it sucks. I think Damian Lillard's one of the 10 to 15 best point guards in NBA history. And I have the utmost respect for that guy. I think he is the best. But, you know, if, if you want to stay, great. If you want to go, I completely get it. But, you know, we have to do what's best for our organization in that circumstance. Yeah. yeah. And I'm glad so they I, did. And, yeah, shout out to the Blazers. Yeah, it gives them optionality, too. Because like, maybe Scoot's awesome, and then Joel Embiid becomes available, <laughs> and then you like want to make a trade. Then, like he may gain value. Like Scoot might gain value more than what the third pick was yeah. worth over the next like couple years. And maybe you do want to still do something around Dame. But I also think if he does gain that value, you're not going to want to trade him. But it gives yeah. them some optionality here, where if they do want to move on from Dame, they could. They get something. I mean, you get something really good for Damian Lillard yeah. right now. And you can have a really good young core and there aren't going to be a ton of teams that are trying to rebuild in the Western conference over the next few years. If you become one of those teams, your picks get really valuable, really fast. And with the base that they have already, I think that they're set up so, so well for the future and can really build something special starting with scoot. So uh, I just I like what the Blazers did. Uh, okay, Sam, can, can, I've got to go. Can I give you one yeah. one last question, or give me one to, more, and then I got to go get train. on an airplane. Yes, for your airplane. Uh, yes. Most surprising thing in the room that happened last night for you? The most surprising thing in the room was definitely when a nine year old was yelling at Bilal Kulabali, "You got traded to the Wizards! To the Wizards, Bilal!" And, you know, Bilal like, gave a look up. That nine-year-old delivered the message to Bilal Kulabali that he was traded to the Wizards. So that was by far the most jarring thing that happened all night is that, you know, it should be like his agent or maybe his I dad. It. I don't know who delivering the message, but it was a nine-year-old who follows Woj on Twitter or Woj and Shams on Twitter that became the, the messenger for him. So, yeah, oh, by far goodness. the most shocking thing. That's my favorite thing in the world. I'm so glad I asked that question for us to finish on that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, me too. Me too. That needed to be told. Uh, go follow Sam and read everything he does. This is a great time to revisit all the draft profiles that Sam did. So if you don't know 
who a player was that your team took. Sam has a, an entire write-up of not only how they play, but who is this guy? And how do they how do they operate in this world? Like you can read so much about every single player. Uh, please go do that. Un- you can subscribe. Unfortunately, oh, yeah, Andrew, there there is one exception to that this year. <laughs> <laughs> and you know Shout what? Shout out to Rick Bibarovich. <laughs> Grizzlies fans, just don't do it. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Just enjoy uh... Marcus Smart and don't worry about it. Um, but yeah, go listen to the Game Theory podcast. Subscribe to this podcast on YouTube and also subscribe to Game Theory on YouTube as well. Uh, Sam, thanks so much for coming on.